looks like it's about time for some fish fry. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 489 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. We are tackling one of my favorite subjects this week, artificial intelligence. My guest is Nick Romano, co-founder and CEO of Deep Light AI. We're investigating Deep Light's new Deep Light Runtime, which makes AI models smaller and faster in production deployment. Why smart manufacturing is a great application for deep light AI, and why ultra compact quantization is key to making AI smarter, faster, and smaller than ever before. Also, this week, I examine a new method called Raw Zero Shot, developed by a team of researchers at Kyushu University that could make AI more robust and reliable in the future. But first, let's bring in Nick from Deep Light. Hi, Nick. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so first off, for my audience who may not know, what is Deep Light all about? All right, well, so Deep Light is a Canadian-based deep tech startup. We're in Montreal and Toronto, two major AI hubs in the North American ecosystem. We were founded in 2019 what we do at Deep Light is we've created a platform and technology that can make AI much smaller, faster, and more power efficient, which generally speaking, AI models or networks are very, very big and complicated. So they require a lot of compute power to actually run and operate. So to get that AI onto devices that would leverage that AI, you need to have your compute be able to actually process that AI. So if you're talking about a giant computer in a data center, easy, no problem. You've got lots of horsepower in there. But if you're trying to get your AI into something small, like say a toothbrush or a phone or something as benign as a doorbell, they don't have a tremendous amount of horsepower. So what Deep Light does is we can transform that AI into a much smaller efficient form factor so that you can deploy it on lightweight hardware in the devices that we use every day. It's what we call AI for everyday life. So Nick, I saw that you guys released a new addition to your platform in January of this year called Deep Light RT or Deep Light Runtime. So tell me more about this addition. It makes AI models smaller and faster in production deployment, right? Yeah, so that's an exciting new release for us at Deep Light. So our initial platform, and we still use this platform, is an automated engine that can make these models more efficient. But with that platform, it's basically a hardware agnostic optimization. So you can take a model that was created, trained for accuracy, but maybe it was too big or too slow or what have you, and you can run it through our engine and we've got this proprietary way to make it more efficient but it's still at full precision. So it's still an AI model. You can run it through whatever software stack for whatever hardware for your use case. We've started this new branch, which is a more hardware aware optimization. So, and our initial target is ARM Cortex-A CPUs. So commodity hardware, you know, low cost, low power CPUs that you find in the things that we use every day. So what we've introduced into Neutrino, into the optimization platform, is what we call low mixed precision quantization, which basically means we can perform the math to take it from 32-bit precision, but we can take it all the way down to one-bit precisions, which makes it ultra small, ultra fast. What makes it work for us is the fact that we can do all of that while preserving the accuracy of the model. I mean, there's other methods to quantize down to low precision, but it comes at a tremendous cost to the accuracy of the AI. We've solved that problem. So we can quantize down to two-bit, one-bit preserving accuracy, but there's nothing out in the marketplace that can run a two-bit model in production. So we created one, and that's what DeepLight RT is. So DeepLight RT is essentially DeepLight's first embedded software solution. So DeepLight RT actually resides on the device with the optimized compiled AI model to run inference. So if you're on a doorbell and you've got a person, pet, car, package detection that you want to have on that doorbell, we can shrink it down 
preserve the accuracy on those various classes, deploy it as a container model, deep light RT right onto that CPU, maybe a Cortex A53 or 72 or something like that. Now you can run that AI right on that device. So Nick, I saw that Deep Light has partnered with IMT to make deep learning more efficient. So tell me more about this partnership. Yeah, so we like to partner with academic institutions. It's actually, it's a very efficient and effective way for us to leverage, you know, the brain power outside of our organization. And IMT Atlantic is one of our more, more recent collaborations. So there's a number of activities going on there as well. But IMT Atlantic is a new partnership that we're having. It's primarily focused around that low mixed precision quantization. And so we've got a research team that is uh, led by a Professor Matthew, and he and his uh, students are working on some very specific techniques on quantization, what we call multiplication-free quantization. It's basically a completely different way of quantizing using different algorithms. That's what we're working on with them. We've we've actually got a patent in process uh, with them right now. Very cool. Yeah. Now, Nick, AI in manufacturing is a hot topic these days. And this is a great case study for Deep Light, right? Can you address how Deep Light could advance smart manufacturing? Yeah, I mean, smart manufacturing, there's lots of different flavors. And because we've got a number of different dimensions within Deep Light, we can solve different kinds of problems. So, you know, some applications still require quite a bit of horsepower, particularly if, let's say, you're doing anomaly detection. One of our customers is a steel manufacturer. They're doing rolled steel. And so, as you can imagine, steel that's being produced is running at high speed on that machinery. And this is anomaly detection. So they're looking to determine whether there's any defects in the steel, because this steel is actually purpose-built for the automotive sector. So there's very stringent standards associated with that metal. So basically, you're running at high speed. you got to be able to look for these anomalies and capture these anomalies at a very high speed as well. So we can optimize that process with our core neutrino optimization, where we can make those models run faster and more efficient on that higher power processors like NVIDIA GPUs and things of that nature. So that's on the high end side, but you know, there's lots of manufacturing machines as well, whether it's like robotics, you know, vibration sensing and all of that sort of thing. A lot of those are very small sensors, microcontrollers, and this is the world of deep light RT. So this is where we get into, you know, very, very small commodity hardware. We're currently working on microcontrollers and sensors as well. And these things can be embedded right on the machines themselves where the manufacturing is happening. And whether that's just a a sensor or literally a robotic process, people are looking at AI to automate because these machines are very, very expensive. They need to do what they need to do. And if they break, that costs a lot of money. So anything that they can do to basically preempt anything bad happening within that process, whether it's the quality of what they're manufacturing or the machine itself, these are use cases that lend themselves very well to what Deep Light does. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, Nick, I think it's time for your off the cuff question. All right. So a lot of us can't have our favorite foods for one reason or another. Lockdown, restaurant closed. You're not going to travel to Thailand or something like that. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if you need a passport to get there. It's on the other side of your country, your uh, Montreal. What would you have? Honestly, for me, it's all about comfort food. I've got the best Italian restaurant right around the corner, family owned. And it's just like mom makes because that's my that's my heritage as well. So that's my go to uh, every single time. But if I'm looking for something exciting, one of my favorites uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a Greek, uh, meal. Well, it's not, it's often an appetizer, but it's called Saganaki and it is really, really awesome. So, and very, very not healthy. We're talking about fried cheese, right? We're talking about a pan coming with this beautiful block of cheese that is flambéed right in front of you. Uh, and it's, it is absolutely to die for. It's not something you want to do every, every day though. <laughs> sure. And that sounds absolutely wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nick, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I look forward to doing it again soon. So, What if we can make AI more robust by investigating how it understands the unknown?
Well, a new method called Raw Zero Shot has been developed by a team of researchers at Kyushu University with the idea that if we examine how neural networks deal with elements unknown to them, we can teach them to be more robust and reliable. Okay. So we all know that AI can be fantastic for image recognition, but alter that image just a little bit, even by just one pixel, and it can get confused. Even the best trained AIs can be misled. Even if an image appears unchanged to the human eye, AI can misidentify that image. And it was this quandary that pushed this team from Kyushu University's Faculty of Information Science and Electrical Engineering to start this research project, which began by investigating different image recognition AIs. It was their idea that if they could identify patterns in how AI behaves when it is faced with samples that they had not been trained with, then maybe they could encourage it to understand images in a more robust fashion. Danilo Vasconcelos Vargas, who led this study, explains their process like this. He says, If you give an image to an AI, it will try to tell you what it is, no matter if that answer is correct or not. So, we took the 12 most common AIs today and applied a new method called raw zero shot learning. Basically, we gave the AIs a series of images with no hints or training. Our hypothesis was that there would be correlations in how they answered. They would be wrong, but wrong in the same way. And you know what? They were right. In all of the cases they studied, the image recognition AI would produce an answer, and the wrong answers would be consistent and would cluster together. This team then studied the densities of these clusters, and they found that these clusters did seem to indicate how the AI processed the unknown images based on its foundational knowledge of different images. Vargas goes on to explain the importance of this research like this. If we understand what the AI is doing and what it learned when processing unknown images, we can use that same understanding to analyze why AIs break when faced with images with single pixel changes or slight modifications. While today's AIs are accurate, they lack the robustness for further utility. We need to understand what the problem is and why it's happening. In this work, we showed a possible strategy to study these issues. Instead of focusing solely on accuracy, we must investigate ways to improve robustness and flexibility. Then we may be able to develop a true artificial intelligence. Wow. So, if you want even more information about this study out of Kyushu University, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at eejournaltfm. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. <laughs> and you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. It really does help. 
Also, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia. That's A-M-E-L-I-A at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of July 8th, 2022, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.